All right, guys, today's video is an important one. I found myself this last week after running errands, coming back out to my Porsche, and it wouldn't start. How can I get my Porsche to start when I'm broken down on the side of the road someplace and I'm stranded? This video is going to show you simple things you can do to find out what the problem is and even maybe correct the problem to get yourself back home and safe. Let's get to it. Hey guys, my name is Brian and welcome to my channel. We're all about Porsches here if you're new. So if you have a Porsche or you're thinking about buying a Porsche and you need to learn more about it and how to do DIY projects to keep it going, hit that subscribe button down below, give me a like, and add a comment on what you own or what you plan on owning. So let's get today's project. Okay, so here are the things to check if you can't get your car started. And this is what's gonna happen. So you do your running around, do your errands, done at work, done at school, you come out to your Porsche and you go to start it. Everything looks good. Make sure the oil is good. Yep, good, good. And nothing, nothing happens. Don't freak out. Calm down. Just chill. Let me show you what to do. The very first thing I want you to do is build your key. Is it kind of sticking? Is it an ignition switch problem? Kind of move it around, wiggle it around a little bit, and give it a shot. Still nothing. Nothing. Try it again. Nothing. Okay. Just move your steel motor around. Give it that interlock in there. Maybe it's jammed or something. Give it another shot. Nothing. Nothing. Now, just as a note on your key, just because the alarm buttons and door open and, and trunk openers work, doesn't mean that the alarm isn't stopping the immobilizer that's underneath the driver's seat or the passenger seat for my friends over across the pond. The pill that's in this key is what activates your ignition not these buttons right here. So key and pill go together. These buttons do not have anything to do with starting it. So what do you do now? You've tried the wiggle. You've tried doing the, the strain wheel. If you have a voltmeter on you, which I'm the type of guy that has a voltmeter on them, um, get out and test the battery. See if you have a full 12.5, 12.6 volts going to the battery. Cause you can have lights on your uh, Boxer or your Carrera, but yet still have that same no start issue. Now, just a quick moment here, guys. I uh, want to take a moment to ask you guys for some help on the channel. If you want to help support us, help keep things going and move it along, why don't you uh, take a moment, an opportunity, and get yourself a new 986 Brotherhood t-shirt. There's a link in the description down below check it out and order yourself a t-shirt or two. Thanks so much. Let's get back to uh, finding out what causes your Boxster not to start. Okay, if you're like me and you carry a voltmeter with you in your tool case, your emergency breakdown kit, let's go and test that battery before we do anything else. So undo the clips. This should just pop off. Get out our multimeter here. Go ahead and set it to 20 volts. Right on. Set that down. Let's find out what we get here. Okay, so we have our leads hooked to our battery. And as you can tell, we're showing about 12.48, so 12.5 volts. That's enough to start the vehicle. So we know our problem is not the battery. But if it was, Obviously, get a jump start from someone, use the jumper cables you keep in your car, or if you're nearby an auto parts store, just go get a new battery. If you're an automatic guy, obviously I have a six speed in the Boxster, but if you're an automatic guy, then you know what? Pull down on it, take it in neutral, and try starting it again. Throw it back up into park and try again. Then throw it back into neutral 
try that with an automatic transmission to see if you can't have that neutral safety switch that's going south on you. Try one of those. Be a little bit aggressive with it and see how it goes. For us clutch guys, you want to make sure that you're depressing that clutch all the way. So all the way in, try to start it. Nothing. Clutch all the way in. We'll pump it a few times. Give it a shot. Nothing. Okay. So we've tried the key wiggle, we've tried the steering wheel. We've made sure that if we're an automatic, we're, we're not, uh, we can move it back and forth, try to start it in different neutral positions in the park position. We've tried pumping it. We, this piece of paper, I keep in my emergency toolbox or kit inside my Porsches. It is basically the layout of the fuse panel that's under your um, driver's front feet. And it is basically your top here. You have a row of 10 fuses. This is row A, B, C, D, E. And then of course you have your emergency power pin and you have extra fuses for down the road. So then when using this, I have this list of common, of what all those fuses are. And I have circled the common ones that would fail, would stop you from actually getting your vehicle started. So in row B, number eight, is the central locking alarm system control unit and the engine electronics control unit. So you wanna check the fuse at B8, then you're gonna jump down to row C, check fuse one, which is engine electronics. Number two, the ignition fuel injection and O2 sensor. And then you're gonna check the fuel pump, which is number four in row C. That is our first thing we wanna do now, getting on the ground, getting underneath there, we want to check those fuses and see if they're any good. So let's get underneath there and try. So you get down on your hands and knees and you get to your fuse box, which as you can tell is right here. Pop it out. Set that aside. Now remember we said the first one we want to check is in row B. So A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so that's B and number 8. So remember they're in 10s, so that one right there. So that would be 10, 9, and 8. Let's pull it out and see. Okay, let's pull this out and kind of look at it here. And as you can tell, it is not broken. So this fuse here is not part of our problem. Now, just continue to go through. Remember, in row C, the third row right here, you want to look at numbers 1 and 2, and then number 4. Check those fuses. If any of those are bad, then that's probably your issue. And you can come down here where your spares are at or in your emergency toolkit that you can use. Grab the spare, the size you need, pop it in there, and get yourself back on the road. So you've checked your fuses and all your fuses are fine, but yet you still can't start the car. If you have a manual transmission, it may be your uh, clutch safety switch, which is located up here see those two wires right there those two wires are what tell the car that the clutch is depressed in order to send a signal to the starter to start you could have a bad switch but let's take that little handy dandy wire i made and that you can make two and i'll show you how you can bypass it to see if that's your problem to get your car started and get you back on the road so let's pull those two switches those two wires really quick this is my little special tool. All it is is a piece of short wire with two male spade connectors on both ends of this wire. You can see it's only a few inches long, about three and a half inches or so. So this little guy here will help us keep troubleshooting our no start issue. Now, if you don't have one of these, now if you wanna know more about this and the other tools, that I carry with me in my Porsches in case anything ever happens to me. I'll point a link up here to that video on how you can learn about the emergency tools and uh, supplies that I keep in all my Porsches. All right, so let's grab this and let's get back to the car. All right, so those two wires right there, that yellow and brown one, they connect to your clutch safety switch. So let's pull those two off and let's bypass them and let's see if that's our problem. There's the first one, and there's that second one. 
And now using that tool that we made, that you can make as well, let's tie these two together real quick. Okay, so we have that bypassed. Give you an idea of what that looks like. So now you do not have to push down the clutch to get your car to start. So we'll come back up here, turn it on, nothing, still. Okay, well, we now know there's no fuses blown. We know that it's not our, our uh, clutch safety switch. So the next thing we want to look at is going to be in the back area, in the, in the trunk, is going to be our fuel pump relay. Let's go check a look at that real quick. So now back in the Boxster, and now on your Carrera, you're going to find this part. So you want to get to... See this one right here? This fuse here? This one right here is your fuel pump. This one right here is your DME relay. Notice that they're all the same here. So if we find that this is bad, and this is our problem, then you can just swap it with one of those two. Not this one, as this is your DME relay. And so swap it with one of those two, and that at least gets you back on the road. So let's go ahead and pull that one. Okay, and I've pulled out this fuse box, or the relay box, to show you guys a little bit better. Now, where's our tool? So what you wanna do is you're gonna take that same tool, you're gonna to make sure you put your wires back in the clutch area. You're gonna take this and you're gonna put it in pin right here. And then you're gonna put it in this pin over here. Let's try this again. So there, get it in, this one, get it in. So see, if you look at the bottom of this, how it sits, if you see right there, 87 and 30, those two need to connect in order to make the starter start when you turn the switch. So it's going to be pin 30, this one right here, 87. So if we go back to here, line this up for you just switching it over see those two are those two that we're gonna jump now let's go back and see if it starts okay let's give it a shot here nothing nothing so we have that relay jumpered so because it's jumpered that starter should be running but it's not so this tells me that our problem is the starter and not that relay. Now, if the car would have started, we would have just went back there, swapped those relays around, and we could have gotten the car back home to where we could put in a brand new relay. Or grab a relay out of your kit, your emergency kit, if you have one like I do. So let's continue to move forward on what else could be going on with this Porsche. Okay, we're back in the car. There's like one more thing we can try here to see what's going on. Pay attention to your tap. Now, if your crank position sensor or your CPS is working correctly, you're gonna see that tap jump on a notch. See it? That tells us our CPS is working correctly. Now, if that wouldn't have popped up, then we'd have known our CPS or crank position sensor is faulty and that could be caught stopping us from driving the car, especially if it started up fine in the morning, you drove it to work or whatever, and you went inside, you did some errands, you came back out and like 10 minutes later, and you, wouldn't, you couldn't get it to start, then that tells you, and if this doesn't bounce. Now, typically a CPS will go out when you've driven the car around, you've done some errands, you went inside the store, you came out of the store, and you went to start it, and nothing. That just means it's it's too hot and it's time to be replaced. But as you just saw how it moved, that tells us the CPS is fine. If it is a bad CPS, 
give the car 30 minutes to an hour to cool down and you can come back out and I bet you it'll fire right up. All right, guys, so we've run through all the steps. Step number one, wiggle that key, move that steering wheel, make sure it's not an ignition problem. If you can wiggle your key and it starts, then chances are it's gonna be that ignition switch. It's also gonna be kind of hard to take out. It's also gonna be kind of flimsy inside the uh, cylinder there. Those are telltale signs you need a new ignition switch. And those are cheap, like 10, 20 bucks in about 30 minutes or so to put in. Second thing you wanna do is make sure if you're driving a Tiptronic car, take your gear shifter, make sure you pull it down into neutral, try to start it, slam it back up in the park, kind of move it around a little bit, see if you can't loosen something up in there. Uh, number three thing is check on your fuses. Get out your list of fuses that control the engine and the engine management. There's only about four of them. Check those fuses, see if one of those is blown. If they are, replace it with your emergency fuses you have in your toolkit. Um, that should get you back going. But if that's not a problem and you have a manual car, you're gonna check the uh, clutch safety switch, which is underneath by the pedal. You're gonna get that little piece of wire that you made and you're gonna connect those two wires together to make a loop and that should get you started if that's your problem. If that's not your problem, you're gonna head back to the trunk and you're gonna pull that number seven relay, which is on the bottom row next to that square, that rectangle fuse, red one at the bottom. You're gonna pull it out, you're gonna take that same jumper from your clutch and you're gonna jumper 30 and 87 back there on the, on the uh, relay. That will activate your starter. If that gets you started, you know it's the relay that you have to replace and not your starter. But if you still can't get the car started, chances are it's gonna be that starter that you're gonna to have to replace. If you've done all that and you check the dash or the gauge, the tack to see when you turn the ignition on, if that needle bounces, if it doesn't bounce, then you know your engine's hot and your CPS is just warm and it needs to cool down. Give it 30 minutes to an hour, try it again, it should fire up. But if your tack moves and you see it bounce, then you know there's something else. And it kind of comes down to just one more thing, and that's gonna be your immobilizer that's underneath the uh, driver's seat. And if that boy's fried, it's off to the boys in uh, Florida at the uh, ECU doctors or ECU specialists. So those are the things that if you find yourself stranded on the road and your car won't start, your Porsche Boxster or Carrera, your 986, 987, 996, 997, will not start those are the things you can test right away to get you going and make and make you get you back home hope you guys have enjoyed this please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already give me a thumbs up if you have any questions or comments or wish to add something to the video for a future reference leave a comment down below all right guys thanks so much catch you later